we're going to start with a familiar song that just says every praise is to our God. If you know it, will you help us sing it? Come on and put your hands together, yeah. Come on, let's take from the top.
Lenny Collect is an interesting story. I grew up in a small town across the street from a t-shirt shop. I remember going in, the smells, the, the color. I had a youth pastor who had this uh, idea that he was gonna create a t-shirt that said, Jesus lives on the front, on the left chest. Man, he sold a ton of those shirts. And, uh, the impact of that wasn't so much just the selling of the shirt, but for me, it was the commitment to, it's a bold statement, I'm gonna wear this into my high school. And if I have this on, then, you know, this is, this is gonna happen. You know, this is, uh, there's no turning back from this. And so it created a, a real boldness in me I think about the impact that, you know, a simple t-shirt had. At Inclect, you know, our goal is to grow the kingdom. It's, it's a principal vision of who we are, grow the kingdom of God. We get opportunity to do that by placing the right look, the right fit, the right feel on all people that are connected, the people we do business with. We try to lead them on, like, hey, if you get it right, if you get to the point where people understand who you are and they start wearing your apparel and it looks good and it fits right and they want to wear their favorite tee and it's got the church logo or the brand, that's what we want for them. Churches have a lot of work to do. Pastors have a ton of work. We, we get it. We understand when it's hard. We understand when you, you're limited on staff and when you're limited on budget, when you've been so busy prepping for everything else that, oh shoot, we forgot. Hey, is there any way we can get this in three days? Yeah, we can help you with that because we get it. We understand. For In Collective, basically what we want to do to any client is to understand who they are and have a portfolio of the products and services that they need and they like and what went well for them. So we're going to really cater to what their needs are. We want to be on staff with them. So when they say, hey, we have to dream about or do this particular thing, like, hey, call Rick or hey, call Kelly or call Craig. It's our absolute pleasure to take that piece of whatever business or church is needing done and to be able to develop it out and deliver it, seeing that whole thing from start to finish, from dream to reality, that's what keeps me going. Because there's a story on the other end of the phone, there's a story on the other end of that email, and they all are trying to get somewhere, they all have passions and, and dreams, and is just being able to have a desire to want to know them, to connect with them, and to really build something long-term instead of just a sale or just, just a transaction. The church should be the best experience that everyone should have. We only get one shot to make a good presentation. We thank God for partnering with Ink Collective to make that one shot the best shot that we can make. They have the heart and they understand ministry. And if I need something, I can trust that it's gonna be high quality and the cost is gonna be effective for what I'm trying to accomplish. As we make the church look better, we believe fully that the kingdom of God will grow. And that's everything to us. That's the heart of the, the ministry of who we are. And when we partner with churches, that's what we mean by we get it.
It is a time of celebration. Time of the church right here. We celebrate Pentecost every year. 
um, 50 days after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But Jesus is really telling the story even with his own life. And many times we miss the story and miss the, um, um, the epitaph of what God is saying um, because we, 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 we get um, sidetracked and distracted. Look at somebody and say, don't get distracted. <laughs> this morning, I would like to preach from a thought, I got a reason to praise him. So my worship, whether you know it or not, when, when we, every Sunday or every time we gather, really is a praise party for me. It's a time that I can come and praise him with my friends. Praise him for what he's done for me. Now, while I'm praising him for what he's done for me, I'm going to stop and praise him for what he did for you. But trust me, I'm going to get back to praising him for what he did. Oh, I got a praise in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wish everybody could just think of the goodness of Jesus like that and just praise him. But this morning our thought is I got a reason to praise the Lord. So now we look at our text and where we come from. Now we understand we're marking a time of festival. Um, the church, whether you know it or not, was birthed on this ideal of celebrating. Any time that God did something, they would stop and celebrate. Matter of fact, when you look in the Old Testament, you'll find there was over um, uh, 50 or 60 festivals and feasts that was already built into their time of celebration. Matter of fact, one of the times that we just came through um, that marks the, the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ was the time of Passover. Yeah, it was a time that we stopped and celebrated when Jesus allowed the death angel to pass over. That's, that's quiet. Like, like, like we just didn't have a death angel in our land. Oh, y'all ain't getting this. And, and, and when have you stopped to celebrate? that the angel of death passed over your house. You saw him. Not only did you see the death angel, they started counting his works and giving you a number every day over 500,000, 600,000. When have you stopped and celebrate that the death angel didn't touch your door? God shows us things and he wants us to celebrate his good works to the children of men. Amen. Passover marks the time now that Jesus Christ himself become the sacrificial lamb to take the death angel out of the earth, take his strength and take his control out of the, of the earth. Matter of fact, when Jesus um, rose, one of the first things he said was, all power is given unto me both in heaven and in earth. Looks back at his grave and say, oh grave, where is your victory? In other words, I done taken the death angel. I done choked him when friends and people thought and the enemy, Lucifer himself, thought he had my prophets captive in death. Oh, God. I done went and took the keys from the death angel. Where death can't take us no more. Death in Christ is not death anymore. He just sleeping. Waiting for that time when Jesus Christ himself shall call us back. I thought I was in a sanctified church. We used to celebrate the day when Jesus himself shall call the saints home. Passover is a time that we celebrate 
But there's a time after Passover when um, they exited out of um, Egypt. Remember Passover, this particular event of Passover of Moses' reign was one of the last miracles that Jesus did before he delivered the Israelites out of Egypt. Matter of fact, it was that particular event that caused Pharaoh himself to say, loose him and let him go. It was that particular event that now becomes celebrated because those who obeyed the will and work of God was able to walk into freedom. It was that particular event that caused them every year around the same time um, to stop and celebrate Passover, but it was actually at a particular time of harvest. It was at a particular time that they would celebrate this, and now they would celebrate that, but 